Up With Crim begins now. 6.30 this morning and the country at the center of the coronavirus outbreak says they plan to lift lockdowns later this month. This morning, we check in with a Spokane native living in China. And an Oregon couple on a remote vacation in the Grand Canyon have returned home and they've heard all about the coronavirus outbreak for the first time. And we know that stay home, stay safe can be a tough sell sometimes for kids, especially now that we are approaching spring break when so many of them would be on vacation. So some creative parents in Western Washington decided to put a spin on a canceled trip to Disneyland and bring some of the magic home. We made it come to our house. We just tried to have the most fun. Splash Mountain was the ride that those kiddos were most excited about and their moms did a great job of trying to recreate it for them. I love seeing the inventiveness, the creativity parents are going to to make sure their kids don't feel like things aren't normal. Thank you for joining us, of course, this morning here on Up With Cram. I am Joshua Robinson, and we continue to bring you coverage while participating in social distancing. And I am joined by my fellow teammates on Up With Cram. Of course, they're all working from home. Jen York, Evan Arani, Dane Marie McNichol, all joining us live this morning. Now, to get things started, we are going to check in with Evan Arani as the sunlight starts to break through our area with a look outside for our local forecast. Good morning, Evan. Good morning, Joshua. Yeah, one of the promising things is that I do have a window here where I can actually look outside and you are correct. It is uh, finally starting to see uh, some signs of light with the day and it looks like today is actually going to be maybe a partly cloudy day. Less of a chance for showers today than over the last several days and uh, I'd say that is very promising news. The downside though is how cold it is outside as we kick off the morning. Yakima, boy, 22 degrees right now. Could it be any colder there? Almost teens out there, whereas average would be mid to upper 30s over overnight. Spokane is at 31 right now, a little bit warmer. 32 in Pullman to start off the day. Radar is less intense though than the last several days. We had picked up on plenty of snow showers and rain showers that were more, were more uniform than this. Right now we're picking up on activity on the west side of the state, far off to the west of the Cascades, and then just a few light snow showers through the central and southern panhandle, mainly through higher elevations. So the, the good news that we have to deliver is that through the day today we probably will be picking up on dry drier conditions and less of a chance of precipitation. What we have as far as the next 12 hours go, 45 degrees as that afternoon high. The sun will set at 722, so enjoy the more than 12 hours of day length that we have. Uh, looks like uh, tomorrow into the weekend we do hold the chance for precipitation, but again, the uh, the best news that I have is the warming temperatures that we've got. So in just a few minutes, we'll walk through that seven day forecast and uh, see just how warm we get. Uh, the hint that I have for you is we could be moving towards the 60s pretty soon. So find out when uh, in just a few minutes. I'll send things back over to you guys. Evan, I have to say the beard is coming in nicely. You were, of course, our no shave November champion. I didn't forget. It looks good. That is correct. Oh, uh, thank you very much. I'm working on it. Still, still a work in progress, but I think that give it another week or so and I'll look like a full lumberjack. <laughs> oh, I believe it. <laughs> All right, Evan, thank you. Well, hey, we do have some latest coronavirus news that we do want to get to this morning here locally. We've talked about a couple of our big events being postponed. Well, now this morning we have some news on Hoop Fest. Of course, a huge summer event for the Spokane area. Hoop Fest leaders say the event right now is still scheduled for the end of June. Right now it's set for June 27th and 28th. The deadline to register, by the way, is May 20th. But leaders have a plan B in the event that it does need to be pushed back. It will now take place August 22nd and 23rd. Now, if players have to do that, if it is pushed back to August, they will have until July 13th to register their teams. The decision on whether or not to postpone the tournament will be made at the end of this month. So you should have some time to make some plans. Well, starting this week, the Washington National Guard will be helping communities with processing, packaging, and distribu distributing meals. Now, the Guard will not be used to enforce Governor Jay Inslee's stay home, stay healthy order. Guardsmen will be sent to local food banks in Chelan, Franklin, King, Pierce, and closest to here, Walla Walla. Well, a North Korean health leader says the country remains coronavirus free. This comes as global cases are near 1 million. North Korea shut its borders in January after the outbreak in China. However, global health leaders believe the country is covering up a local outbreak. 
Well, Joshua, that is a quick look at this morning's headlines, both here locally and around the world. We'll send things back to you. Thank you, of course, for checking in with us this morning, Jen. I think it can't be stated enough. We appreciate you allowing us to join you from your home as you've continued to work from home every day over the past two weeks, so we appreciate it. And I know that you're cozy, and so you get to enjoy it, but really, we can't understate it enough. We do appreciate all the work you're doing for us. Uh, I'm not really doing the heavy lifting. You guys are doing that back at the station, but doing my part, and I got to say, I'm leaning in pretty hard. So far, I'm okay with the stay home, stay healthy order. I'm pretty cozy here. I'm looking forward to the day, Jen, when everybody's in full pajamas. <laughs> it's going to happen soon. We'll check in with you in just a little bit. We are also joined by Dana Marie McNichol this morning, also working from home. Good morning, Dana Marie. How are you doing this morning? All right, it looks like uh, Dana Marie's, uh, we're having a situation with her microphone, but we will check in with her in a little bit, uh, a little bit later. But we do want to let you know that long before we were all ordered to stay at home, there are people in China who are experiencing the reality we're seeing now. Back on February 13th, we aired Dana Marie's FaceTime interview with Tim Reeves, a Spokane native living in China. Now, at that point, there were only 15 confirmed cases of the coronavirus in the United States. Now, there are hundreds of thousands, according to the CDC. Now, Tim had been a quarantine in his small apartment since January 26th, and the scene in China was similar to what we see in the U.S. today. Just a month after speaking with him, businesses, have, businesses closed, restricted travel, and mandatory masks in public. We caught up with Tim now to see how life has progressed. So it kind of happened suddenly. A couple shops opened up, and then literally like two days later, everything was open. People uh, still you know, scanning temperatures and stuff, but like every shop's open. Now, of course, that's what it's like today. Things, of course, are continuing to change. Businesses are open and people are starting to get back to day-to-day -day life. But he does say life isn't totally back to normal. Social behavior has changed a bit. It used to be people stood really close to you in line and that doesn't happen so much anymore. Everyone's still wearing masks. Masks are still like mandatory uh, out in public. Now, on the other side of the two-month quarantine, Tim does say he has a message of hope and reassurance to all of his friends and family back in America. It is something that can be controlled. The situation isn't hopeless. It's just going to take a big, you know, com you know, community effort. People are going to need to get together and get this thing beat. Like, America, if we're united in solving a problem, I think is capable of anything. Uh, and we just need to get everyone on board. And of course, he leaves us with some advice. He says, honestly, get a bidet. You don't need all that toilet paper. Keep that in mind when you deal with people and just be kind and nice. Of course, this is our second day in a row where we are talking about a story about a potential bidet situation. So I think that might be a trend that we're starting to see pop up more here in the, in the Northwest and maybe across the country as well. All right, we also want you to know that we understand all of the information that we bring you each morning about the coronavirus can be overwhelming at times. We get it. So we have set up keywords throughout our show that you can use by texting in our text line. You see the number right at the top of your screen, along with four examples of some of the words that we've used over the past few weeks. Our text line again is 509-448-2000. We encourage you to use these keywords any chance you'd like a little bit more information. We'll be back with more of our Up With Cram after the break.